Greetings! It's Maxo Diddly. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can make a simple colour swap shader in Godot. Let's get right into it. Also, the shader code will be in the description below for you to copy and paste. It's not long, but if you want to copy and paste it, you can. So firstly, we need to make a sprite to perform our colour swap on. So we're going to click on the plus here, and we're going to type in sprite. And we're going to do a sprite 2D. So we're going to create it. And for the texture, we're going to drag and drop a red sprite sheet from Fire Red and Leaf Green. And as it's pixel art, this is an optional step, but we're going to go to texture and we're going to set the filter to be nearest so it doesn't blur when we scale it. Then we're going to locate it. We're going to make it bigger. And we're then going to move the character to be in the view of the camera. Next, what we're going to do is... On our sprite, we're going to click on material. Then we're going to click on where it says empty. And we're going to click on new shader material. And then you're going to see a ball. And we want to click on the ball. And then you're going to see a bigger ball. And we're going to click on the empty text here next to the shader text. And we're going to click on new shader. And we're going to create a shader. So type is going to be shader. Mode is going to be canvas item. Template, we don't want a template because we're making the shader ourselves from scratch. And built-in shader is going to be unticked. And then for the name, we're going to make it color swap. And it's going to be .gd shader. Then we're going to click on create. So now we're going to create a shader. And as you can see, the shader has now been applied to this material for this sprite, but it does nothing because it's got no code. So let's write some code for it. And you notice, there's some code here already, which is defining the shader type. And we're saying this shader is going to be used for UI elements and sprites. Then we're going to do uniform, vec4, target color, colon, source color, semicolon. So here we're going to be creating our variable to store the color that we want to be replaced. So, the keyword uniform is a type of variable that can be set outside of the shader and doesn't change while the shader runs. Vec4 is a vector 4, which contains four values, red, green, blue, and alpha. Target color is the name of our variable, and colon source color is just a hint to the editor that this is a color input. We're going to do the same thing again, but for our replace color. So target color is what we want to be replaced, and replace color is what we're going to be replacing our target color with. And our next step is, we're going to do uniform float tolerance, colon, hint range, 0, 1. So this line creates another uniform variable called tolerance, and float means it's a single number. And hint range, 0, 1, tells the editor that the value should be between the values of 0 and 1. And you might be thinking, Max, why have you not put 0, 0.0 and 1.0? So now we're going to do void fragment. And we've also got uh, two curly brackets after. So we're going to be making our fragment function. And in a shader, the fragment function runs for every pixel of the object being drawn. And this is where the magic happens for each pixel. So think of this as a fancy loop that's going to loop through every pixel. We're then going to do two lines of code in here to start with. We're going to do vec4 text color equals text color texture and UV. This line reads the color of the current pixel from the texture or image being drawn. And we're going to be creating a variable called text color, which stores the color again in RGBA format. And texture, texture UV fetches the color of the pixel from the texture at the coordinates UV. Texture is obviously the texture being used and UV are the coordinates of the current pixel on the image. So we're just saying, get the color of the current pixel from the image. And then we're going to do float dist equals distance, text color dot RGB, target color dot RGB, and distance, and then passing in the RGB values of our text color and our target color, calculates how different the RGB values are of the current pixel from the target color. And we are ignoring the alpha channel, which is why we're just doing .rgb and not .rgba. And we're basically asking, how similar is the current pixel's color to the target color? So we're going to do, if this is less than tolerance, text color.rgb equals replace color.rgb. 
And basically, we're going to check if the distance between the two colors is small enough, i.e. if the colors are similar. If the target color is close enough to the current pixel we're looking at, in terms of color, that means, hey, this is a pixel that needs to have a color swap occur on it. And if we do that, we then do text underscore color dot RGB equals replace underscore color dot RGB, which is the line of code that does the color swap. Also, you do a curly bracket after because it's an if statement. After that, we're then going to do color in uppercase and spelt the American way equals text underscore color. So this line sets the final color of the pixel. Here, we're just telling our code what color we want this pixel to be if we do a color swap. But here is where the color swap occurs. It's either going to be equal to this value here, meaning the color remains unchanged, or this value here, meaning the color of the pixel has changed. And color is a built-in variable that determines the output color of, a, of the current pixel. And that's all of the code for this tutorial. Also, make sure the curly bracket at the end here is indented properly. Then we're going to save our work. And then we're going to click on our Sprite2D. And if we go there, you'll notice there's some differences. We've got shader parameters, and we've got target color, and replace color, and tolerance. So for the target color, we're going to click on it. And you can enter the hex value, you can toggle with the RGB values here, or you can click on the color picker. So I'm going to pick the red on top of red's hat. And then we're going to click on the replace color. So I want to replace that hat with, I don't know, some green. To make it look like, I don't know, someone's thrown up from the top of a skyscraper and it's landed on his head. Why not? Let's do that. So we're going to do that. And currently you're thinking, but Max, nothing's happened. Well, that's because the tolerance is on zero, meaning the color swap could never happen. But if we up it a little bit, even just a tiny bit to like 0.015, you'll notice there's green on his head now where that exact red was. If we increase the tolerance, you're going to start to see more and more of him become green. Because how close we are to the target color is less important. And if we set our tolerance to one, nearly everything gets changed. And let's say we change the color in the color wheel. The color changes in real time. This will change in editor as well as when you're building the game. But let's say you want to use this shader now on another sprite. I'm going to quickly show you how you can do that. So I'm going to create another sprite. We're going to go up here. We're going to create another sprite 2D. This sprite 2D is going to be a child of the scene. And we're going to use our leaf sprite sheet. And she's currently a bit pixelated. But if we go to our texture and then go to filter, we can do nearest, so she's no longer pixelated. And then we can go to material and we can click on empty. And then we need to click on new shader material. This is important. We need to give it a separate material to our current sprite. Otherwise, they will share the same color swapping. And then for shader, we can then click on load. And then we can find our shader here. We can click on open. And then we can go to shader parameters. We can pick, I don't know, the white on her cap and replace that with some red. And then we set the tolerance to go up. And as you can see, she's got some red on her head. So yeah. And last thing we're gonna do is we're going to click play to see the code in action. And as you can see, the color swapping works in real time. So thanks for being a great audience. Be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials. Thanks for watching.